Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK around the world. And thank you for your messages, your emails. Thank you, Claudia, for, Claudia, for the new topic. I'll look forward to looking into that and see what I can come up with. And for all your comments, thank you very much. And if you're the first time you're passing through, please subscribe, like and share if you think that what I talk about is of interest. Um, today, I came across um, an article. It was came out by Jamaicans.com. And what they were saying was that um, Siri had confused Rihanna whether or not she was Jamaican or Bajan. And the reason why it had come about was because some tweets had gone around about Jamaican currency. And somebody said, oh, you know, about Rihanna being in Jamaica, and then they hashtag Jamaica, and then they hashtagged Rih Rihanna Jamaica, and then this doctor hashtagged, I wish Rihanna was Jamaican, or something like that. Anyway, what happened was, is that in the end, because there had been so many interactions, I think 160,000, about whether, you know, hashtagging Rihanna and Jamaican, um, it silly got confused. And now if you search for Rihanna, you know, it comes up whether or not she's Jamaican. What this led me to wonder is, can we fool Siri? Can we fool artificial intelligence? Can we actually deceive it? Because I was thinking to myself, if that's what's happened just through hashtag, that means it is totally dependent on the information we give it. And it is. Artificial intelligence is dependent on how it's trained, on the information it's given. And remember, the reasons why the facial recognition is faulty is because they used white middle class um, people to train them on. They've also got certain tones, certain intonations, certain voices, and they use all of these things to create the program. So that means, I don't know if um, things like Alexa or um, Siri, they have facial recognition, but my point is, is that you can lie. You can actually put in that information what you want and see what comes up, see what comes back. Because if it's based on what we put in it, or what anybody puts in it, we can put in what we like. So it's only because the majority of us are not thinking about it, and the majority of us are, um, are honest, and we just do things randomly. When we complete online forms, we, we are honest. But just supposing, Everybody, every black person decided to put that they were African. Instead of breaking it down that they were Jamaican, Bajan, black British, um, all the different categories, what would that do for their statistics? What would that do for the statistics that these artificial intelligence systems use? Or supposing we, you know, where they asked for the ethnicity. Supposing we were put, we all, we all put that we were white instead of black. What would that do? Because, like I say, it's really if artificial intelligence is based on inputting data, which is what it is. If you put in false information, you're not going to get back the right. You're not going to get back the right results, are you? So, like. Um, Rihanna now, we all know she's from Barbados, but now Siri, when you're pulling up Rihanna as an option, it will come up that she's Jamaican because so many people have put in the hashtag Rihanna Jamaican. And so for people who don't know she's Bajan, they could end up thinking that she's from Jamaica. So it's quite an interesting phenomenon. There is quite a lot of, oh, I forgot to turn this thing off. Hold on one sec. It won't take me long. You know, I do these um, videos randomly. I, I plan to go to bed or I plan to go upstairs or I plan to study. And then I'll get this source of inspiration. And because of that, because it's not really planned, 
I end up leaving my phone on and getting these interruptions, which are not really professional, so my apologies. So now, hopefully, it won't ding, ding, ding. So anyway, um, what have I got here? Um, systems used by social media are dependent on accuracy and the information we give it. Now, we all know that people put up false profiles, and because they put up false profiles, nobody really knows who they are. So that's another thing. And they're trying to sort that out and stop people from putting false profiles in by asking them to submit phone numbers and goodness stones what. But anybody can do anything. Anybody can get an email and set up a profile and set up a Facebook account. So um, I think that it can be fooled. They reckon it can't. They have a system called Silent Talker. Now... Um, silent talker, um, which is a, like a lie detector, and dare, which is a deception analysis and reasoning en en so engine, they are taught to look for and classify human micro expressions, such as lips protruded, eyebrows, a frown. All of those things, it's supposed to pick it up and can tell whether or not you're lying. So when you put this information on Facebook or online applications, it's supposed to detect um, whether or not the person who's submitting the information is lying. Now that tells me that whether I'm looking into this um, laptop to do this video, there, there might be another system in it that is recognising me facially. Or, you know, maybe these Alexa's things that you have in your house. I don't have one. Maybe they've got facial recognition hidden in them. And then we don't know because if what they're saying is that these are how they get their information, they must have a backup plan that helps them deduce who's who. Otherwise, the whole world would be a frenzy, not unless... They are banking. And the thing is, is that it's newly introduced, recently new. So I guess all the information would have been accurate before um, all these equipments come out. I mean, it's only the last kind of 10 years or so. So I think they're banking on people being honest and not, re not really taking on board that we are putting ourselves in the hand of artificial intelligence. And the thing is with that is that you know, this, the government assumes that it's correct. If it's incorrect, you're still going to get done for it. You can be criminalised for these systems. If they're wrong, they're not going to believe they're wrong. And that's why DWP, I'm in a pickle, because sometimes they are wrong. Sometimes they do misdiagnose. Sometimes they do give the wrong information and people get penalised and they lose their money. So, um... Let me see what other equipment they've got. They've got quite a few. They've got that silent talker. They've got the dare. They've got something called iTalk. But hold on a minute. Let me just see what I've got here. Several studies show how a system that recognises images or sound can be deceived to think that a person or object is someone or something completely different. I remember that video I did about um, that guy. They rejected his um, passport photo because they thought, his, you know, they detected that his lips were open and they didn't really, um, it didn't analyse his lips. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm just kind of, you know me, I'm just thinking out loud, to be honest. Um, AI is not 100%, but yet it is being used to decide the fate of humans. High probability is not certainty. Apparently, we are three to four years away from an AI that detects deception flawlessly by reading the emotions behind human expressions. I mean, are humans that predictable? However, they reckon they can't do that with psychopaths. These AI detectors will not be able to detect the emotion of psychopaths because they don't have any. So I don't know how that will work unless we all turn into psychopaths and then what a world that would be. 
Since 9-11, the psychological sciences have been increasing their ability to spot potential threats. While airports look to heighten security protocols, it, many academics look deeper into the ways of detecting deception within international airport settings. In 2018, a 4.5 million euro grant from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Programme was awarded to use computational methods to detect deception from facial cues. So they're looking to see our face and our expressions to see whether or not we're lying, whether or not we're hiding something. And, you know, they reckon that a person will hear 200 white lies a day. Every single person will hear 200 white lies a day. Whether it's not to say, oh, you look lovely today. Oh, I like your dress when they really don't. It doesn't really matter. So how does that work with artificial intelligence? Are you going to be perceived as somebody who's deceitful, who's a liar? Because you're not being 100% honest. And they reckon that people have like three or four, I think, proper lies, bad lies a day. But the thing is, is that these systems are designed to find out who's lying. And in, the, in, in a, on a grander scale, these systems are going to be used to determine who can get funding, who can get money, who, who can be rented to, who's reliable. And it's going to be based on whether or not you are lying, whether or not you're honest, whether or not you have said any lies. And it's going to be picking up whether it's your eyelids, whether it's your, not your body language. And I mean, you could just be a person who's naturally jittery. But if these systems are going to be used, like they said, to determine the fate of humans, unless you're 100% squeaky, squeaky clean, you're going to have a problem. Some of the critical methods used in automated deception detection are that of micro expressions. Our bodies expose us in every way. Hearts race, sweats, drips and micro expressions leak from small muscles in the face. Unless you're a good liar, a compulsive liar or a psychopath, then it won't. We stutter, stall, make Freudian slips. No mortal can keep a secret, wrote that psychoanalyst in 1905. If his lips are silent, he chatters with his fingertips. Betrayal oozes out of him at every pore. I mean, I could tell you a lie. How are you going to know? I mean, I think that's kind of disturbing because really and truly, I can't, I think, well, everybody tells lies, don't they? Even if it's like they sort of say white lies. Like if I go to work and I'm 10 minutes late and they say, well, why are you late? Oh, there's too much traffic. There might not have been any traffic. I mean, what difference does it make? I mean, you could, I guess you could actually say, oh, I just woke up late or I left the house late. You could be totally honest. Sometimes people lie because it's easier to lie. And I mean, the thing is, the lies don't even have any consequence. Somebody might say, oh, what are you doing? And you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. <laughs> and you're going to tell them, oh, well, I'm photocopying um, homework for my daughter. Like a lady at work today, she goes, oh, I've just finished my homework. I'm just going to print it off. Is she really going to tell her boss that she's printing off um, homework? You know what I mean? Oh, if somebody gets you a present and you don't like it, are you really going to tell that person, oh, I don't like that? Mm, no. Nah. You're not. I think, I think to expect people to be 100% squeaky clean is asking too much. But these systems, are, that is what they're going to be asking of humans. And we're going to turn into China with this scoring whether or not you are squeaky clean. And that is scary, really. 
I wonder how many people would pass that. I mean, I think. I wonder how many people, you know, would pass that. I wonder how many people don't tell one single lie. I mean, you get husbands that say, oh, I've forgotten your present. I've left it at work. And they run out and buy it. You know what I mean? I mean, you can have, you can say, um, I mean, there are so many little stupid lies that people say, you know, to stop hurting people's feelings or to protect themselves or whatever reason. Some people lie by omission. How does that work in these kind of systems? Or how does it work when they say, um, oh, I, I've, I've, I, I've got you something. And then they say, oh, I was only joking. Is that a lie? <sighs> the sophisticated lie detectors, polygraphs and other artificial intelligence systems are now being used by the police force, state agencies, nations desperate to secure themselves against foreign threats. They're also being used by employers, insurance companies and welfare officers. And we apparently, um, Todd Mickelson, the CEO of Converse's, Converse, says we've seen an increase in interest from both the private sector and within government, which makes a lie detector. Well, the Converse makes a lie detector based on eye movements and subtle changes in the pupil size. Now, would you believe that when you lie, the size of your pupil changes. And they're going to be using these in employment, you know, when you're going for an interview. They're going to be using them when you go for, um, to fill up an application at DWP for benefits. They're going to be using them at the home office. Can you imagine? I mean, some people, they say, oh, I worked at somewhere for two years when they only worked at there for maybe six months. And oh, it was years and years and years ago when the place is, you know, they know that that company has gone bust or is closed down. It's not there anymore. Oh, I worked there for several years, but it's closed down now. What about that lie? They'll be able to get you. It's not funny. We all have to be, we're going to have to be like bloody robots. Absolutely perfect. Well, that's what they want. They want human robots, don't they? And they're saying that this is supposed to make the world safe. That's what they're claiming. That these, that, you know, being able to tell if somebody lies or if somebody is deceitful is to make somebody safe. And how am I, how did I even get here from the Rihanna um, tweet? But all I'm saying is that can we, um, the same way that has kind of confused Siri, can we confuse artificial intelligence? Converus technology I detect has been used by FedEx in Panama and Uber in Mexico to screen out drivers with criminal histories and by the credit ratings agency Experian, which tests its staff in Colombia to make sure they aren't manipulating the company's database to secure loans for family members. In the UK, Northumbria, police are carrying out a pilot scheme that uses eye detect to measure the rehabilitation of sex offenders. Other eye detect customers include government of Afghanistan's McDonald's and dozens of local police departments in the US. Soon, large-scale lie detection programs could be coming to borders of the US and the European Union where they would flag potentially deceptive travellers for further questioning. Well, what if, what if states and employers come to believe in the power of lie detection technology that proves to be deeply biased or that doesn't actually work? And that's my fear, you know, because if it is wrong, people will be criminalised, people could lose jobs, people could lose homes, lots of things could happen because 
you know, the algorithms are faulty because they are based on what they put in there to train them. The way, because I, I was looking up, how do they actually train these AI systems? And they give it information like they, you know, like they were using um, white males um, to test it on, you know, visibly. And then they're using voice activation. And there was another thing that they were using. Hold on, hold on, hold on voice recordings so if you talk a certain way it's gonna it's gonna pick you up um video recordings video data sets photos using photos whose photos they're using photos of according to information they're using photos of white middle class males so that's why females are getting picked up the elderly and um black people image annotation and that's for road road traffic and for the training of autonomous driving and parking systems and evaluation of results of artificial intelligence systems by human mind who are the humans so that's how they're actually that's how they actually train these systems so if they're training it with 40 equipment and it's not wide there's bound to be some flaws the creators of these tools argue that by weeding out deception, they can create a fairer, safer world. But the ways lie, the way lie detectors have been used in the past suggests such claims may be far too optimistic. Because we've seen them on, we used to see them on daytime TV, didn't we? In, in um, Jerry, whatever his name was, we've got his name now. But anyway... Number of them, I, can't, I don't really watch them, so I can't remember their names. Lie detection technologies examine different types of evidence. The first two are verbal, the things we say and the way we say it. Jeff Hancock, an expert on digital communication at Stanford, has found that people who are lying in their online dating profiles tend to use the words I, me and my more often. So listen out for that, folks. If you're on online dating, listen if they're using I, me and my too often. I wonder why they would do that if they're lying. I guess it's over, you know, exaggerating or over emphasis to make them sound convincing, maybe. Voice stress analysis, which aims to detect deception based on changes in tone of voice. So that was used during the interrogation of, uh, where have I put it now? I've lost it. Anyway, one guy was interrogated and they used it. But I don't know what I've done with a piece of paper now. Anyway, you get the gist of what I'm talking about. And yeah, it's quite disturbing actually. So I don't think we're going to be able to foil artificial intelligence if anything is going to foil us and we're going to be right up the creek without a paddle and that's all for now bye bye